Tell the somebody I feel good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. You see, if you don't define how you feel, people will define it for you. Amen? If you don't define how you feel, people will tell you how you feel. And that definition might, always, might be a wrong definition. Praise God. It is better you defy how you feel this morning. When you wake up in the morning, you say, this is the day the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in him. Amen. Amen. You know, this morning I was just thinking in the bedroom, I said, the, the, the greatest desire you know, of, man, of mankind is to be happy. People want to have a happy marriage, you know, happy home, happy job. Amen. People just want to be happy. Praise God. You see, about 85% of, uh, of world population don't want to be a billionaire. Hello, people just want to have food on their table for their children. Amen? They have a, you know, a place, they share. They don't want to be billionaires. No, you see, no, 85%, they just want to be comfortable. Praise God. They want to be happy. And happiness is your portion. In the name of Jesus. I see you fly on the wings of happiness. In the name of Jesus. This is your season of happiness. This is your season of joy. This is your season of empowerment. I just wish somebody shout a big amen. It is your season. It is your moment. It is your hour. In the name of Jesus. The enemy cannot stop you. They cannot stand you. They cannot hinder you. And there is nothing they can do about what God has said concerning you. In the name of Jesus. The, war, the battle is on but the victory is sure. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Last week we had a covenant service. As a result, we did not continue with our the series we, we've been sharing on the anointing. Praise God. So today we, we, we continue with that message. We are continuing with that message on, on, on the anointing. Understanding the anointing part three. Amen. And um, so when I'm teaching on this, I just want to take time like, to show you some scriptures so that we can. Amen. Praise God. Make sense. Praise God. I like also to be excited. The Lord, I like to be excited. But when we show you the scripture, you will never forget it. Praise God. And then line up in line, precept up in precept. You will go home and you will still, you know, you will be hanging somewhere in your brain. Praise God. Even after 10 years, you will remember. Amen. So this morning, I want to share with you what we call understanding the anointing. Can anybody remember what we define the anointing to be? If you were here in the last three weeks and you just want to tell us what we said the anointing was, was all about. Anybody remembers? Sister. Pardon, sister. Propo, help me. To be set apart. Okay. To be, to be anointed. Amen. It's to be set apart. Praise God. Amen. But definition of anointing. Can anybody just help me? Because, eh? To be, yeah. Partly. Praise God. To be empowered. Amen. The power of God. Amen. So we say the anointing helps you to do what? To do extraordinary, you know, exploit. Praise God. The anointing empowers you to influence your realm. Amen. The realm where you live, the realm where you dwell. The anointing is the presence of God. Amen. In, in, in the presence of God robbed in, 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 up in my, mankind. God's presence, the Holy, the Holy Spirit presence robbed on a man to empower him for dominion. Praise God. So the anointing of God is what everybody needs. Every one of us needs the anointing. So let's quickly look at these few scriptures before I continue. Mark 5.30. I'm not going to read it all. I'll just read Mark 5.30. And then we read again Luke 16, 17 and 19. <clears throat> Shall we all read? And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone. What that word virtue? But another word for virtue is power. Amen. We can also anointing. Amen. Had gone out of what him. Turned him about in the praise and said, Who touched my clothes? Amen. There is what the Bible says, virtue or uh, power had gone. Gone. Amen. Travel. Praise God. Transmitted out of what him. Amen. Shall we quickly look at Luke? Luke. The book of Luke, chapter, chapter 6. 17 to 19. Luke chapter 6, 17 to 19. This scripture, okay, shall we read? And he came down with them and stood in the plain. And the company of his disciples and the great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon. 
which came to hear him and to be healed of their disease. One to hear and to be healed. Amen. Hallelujah. And they that we are vexed with unclean spirits and they that we are healed. They, they we are healed. Amen. And the whole multitude sought to touch him. Well, that was they sought. They put a demand on the anointing. Amen. For they, are, they are went what? Went. Well, that word again. They are went what? Power. Virtue. Out of him and he hid them all. Amen. May power, you know, went out of you today. And hear your generation. May power go out of you, project from you, and hear your generation. In the name of Jesus. <clears throat> so as we continue to say, the anointing can be transmitted from the carrier to affect individuals, peoples, and nations. Amen? Especially when a demand is placed on it. The anointing of God in your life, the oil of God in your life, can be transmitted, amen, or can travel to affect, you know, individuals, your community, nations, and people around you, amen. amen. I realize that indeed the anointing of God can be projected beyond your horizon. And I watch this, the Bible speaks of the woman of issue of blood, who went through all sort of things in the hand of doctors. Amen. She went through a lot and she was not healed. One day she saw Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus Christ was passing by. In fact, Jesus Christ in the, in, was not you know, going. He was on appointment. He was not an appointment for this woman. He was just going somewhere. And this woman placed a demand on the anointing, on the grace of God, you know, in his life. Amen. He, she placed a demand. Immediately, Jesus was not going for her. She, he, Jesus was going to the house of Jairus' daughter. I mean, Jairus' servant also. I mean, I think so. Was going to the house. Is it Jairus' daughter? Should be daughter. He, he, he had an appointment on his way. But this woman said, I'm going to, you know, put, place a demand on, 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 on Jesus Christ. I want to tap what is in his life. Immediately, she stretched forth her hand. And she tapped the floor. And the Bible says something, virtue, power, went out. Power, no, went out. Or in, or another scripture say, the, the other scripture we read used the word gone. Jesus noted that something had gone out. Now another word for gone, you know, the present word for gone is go, right? Go. Now something, go. Something went out. Amen? It means, it means the anointing went out. The anointing, you know, traveled, projected, you know, from Jesus to affect this woman's life. And then the Holy Spirit was ministering to me that a lot of time when we pray for our, our brothers and sisters beyond this nation, maybe you heard that somebody is sick, and maybe your nephew and somebody, somebody had, had to, you probably heard that your your nephew you know have two two more, and you cried because you were not expecting to hear that. Amen. You cried and cried and released the anointing. Amen. Remember, the anointing is the presence of the Holy Spirit. The presence of the spirit, when it is rubbing you, it becomes the anointing. That is when power manifests. When you carry the presence, amen, then all over you people will notice the, radi the radiance of God's presence. Oh, a lot of time you hear your neighbor, your friends, or, or, or people around you are sick. You just cry out to God. And you pray and say, Father, I ask your spirit right now to come break that yoke. And to, after two, three days, you know you really well to the Lord. You cry to the Lord. You know in your heart that there is a, sh a shift has taken place in the spirit. After three days and somebody called you, say she went back to the hospital and the doctor declared that she had no tumor. And there, you're just smiling and laughing because you knew what happened. They don't know what happened. You knew what you did in the spirit. Just like that woman. Hello? You know, the woman of issue of blood, she knew, she was the only one that knew what transpired in the spirit between her and Jesus. So, sometimes when you pray, you see the anointing of God project beyond your horizon. It can go, you know, to, the, to your village, to the nook and crannies of this world and break yoke, amen, and barriers. Now, what we do is, some of us, we don't know the, the, the importance of the anointing, so we don't use it. We don't enforce the anointing. You have to start enforcing the anointing you have. 
The anointing is meant to, to be enforced. Praise God. Enforce the anointing of God around your horizon. Amen. Around your house and your family. Enforce the presence of God. A lot. A lot. So anytime any nation, people, amen, place a demand on the anointing of God, you will always see revival. Amen. Let me, I call it reawakening. Praise God. If you see a group of people that place a demand on the presence of God, they just want God to move. They keep on praying, keep on believing, keep on praying. It will not be long. You will notice that something has shifted in the spirit. Hello? So at the anointing travels if you know, amen, how to place a demand on the anointing. Hello? You may have seen it. Maybe you know a man of God somewhere in, in, some, in some part of the world. And you really want to operate, you know, operate on that realm. And you say, Lord, give me the anointing of this man. Praise God. <laughs> and Lord, you begin to place a demand. It can place a demand through your seed. You can place a demand through praying for him. Amen. There's the association by absent. You can still associate with people even when they are not close to you. It can associate by listening to their tips. It can associate to them by reading their books. It can associate to them by praying for them. Praise God. You can associate with people. And you begin to place a demand on the anointing. It will not be long. You will sense that you are flowing in the same level. Because the anointing is transferable. Hello? So, the other day, the Lord showed me and something. said, do you know why? When Jesus spoke, remember this young man? The centurion. Amen? Amen. You know his story, right? In book of Matthew, Matthew 8, written from 5 to 13. He came to Jesus and said, look, my daughter, no, my servant is sick. Hello? And said, Jesus Christ wanted to go to minister to the servant. All of a sudden, he said, master, he said, look, you can speak thy word and my servant will be healed. And I said, wow, wow. You can speak your... Now, what happened? Did Jesus speak a word? And the servant got healed. And the Holy Ghost said, no. It's not just ways. Everybody can speak a word. Hello? Everybody can speak a word. And the Holy Ghost said, it's not just a word. It is a word that is mixed with anointing. It's, it's a word that is empowered by his anointing. Presence. That when Jesus spoke that word, it carried the spirit of Jesus. And the spirit of Jesus produces the presence. Amen. And the presence breaks the yoke. The presence is the anointing. Hello? So, and the Holy Ghost showed me that when Jesus spoke that word, what actually happened? That word was empowered by his spirit. That is why a lot of time, when people, I told you last time, when people speak to you, why is it when, when people speak to you, you feel pain? People just speak to you. They didn't slap you. They didn't fight you. But you start crying. Hello? You cry all the day because of the heart, the pain. You don't know why you feel the way you feel. Am I still talking to somebody? Amen. It's because it's not just the way. What hurt you was the spirit from the way. Because when people speak, it carries either a positive spirit or negative spirit. So what really hurts your spirit when people speak negative things into your life, is the spirit behind their word. Now, when Jesus spoke that word, the man placed a demand on the anointing. As I speak, and my servant will be healed. He spoke a word that was empowered by his spirit. Amen. And soon that was done, the word went straight to the houses of Jairus. Locate the street of Jairus. Amen. No, locate his no, house number. Got to the right room that the girl was. I am not talking to somebody. Am I talking to somebody? And the word located the exact room the servant was sleeping in. And the word hit her. Bam! Oh, may the word hit somebody. In the name of Jesus. It was an ordinary way. It was a way that is empowered by his spirit. That spirit produces the anointing. It is the anointing that brought the sickness in the life of that servant. It wasn't just ordinary ways. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. So the anointing travels through the word. Amen. When you speak, like mama, Paul's mama was sick. And I know Paul been requesting for prayer. 
No, the, 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 the way, you know, she, he, he told me about the mama's sickness, it doesn't look like she was going to get healed because she was preparing to die. But people were releasing ways that carry spirit. They were releasing ways. The more you speak in the, you know, you can speak into the horizon. You know, it can impregnate the horizon. Impregnate things around you. Speak life into your problem. Into, you know, speak deliverance into your situation. Keep on believing that God Almighty is going to make something good out of this ugly situation. Amen. I see some of you now thinking that you've got an ugly situation, but God is about to visit you. <coughs> In the name of Jesus. God is about to turn your situation around. In the name of Jesus. May the anointing of God that breaks you break every yoke in your life. Even as I speak right now, may life enter you. In the name of Jesus. Jesus said, the way I speak, they are spirit and life. John 6, 63. said, the way I speak, they are spirit and life. Oh, Rabbi, Baba. Oh, Rabbi. Now, now, that implies that when he spoke that word, it wasn't just ordinary word. It was a word empowered by his spirit. That was one of the reasons that Jairus you know, 7 was able you know, to receive her healing. It was because of the spirit that involved the word. So you can understand that you can project the grace, the anointing in your life, beyond where you are. You don't need to travel to your, maybe if you're not from this nation, I'm from Nigeria. I don't need to go to Nigeria to defy the atmosphere in my father's house. I don't need to go there. Or I need to, if I believe that God is able to define, to redefine my, my father's house situation. If there's anything wrong going on in that house. And I believe that God is able to redefine it. I, all I need to do is speak the word. Speak the word. Speak the word. Your destiny is in the word. Amen. Everything you will be and you have become come from the word. You can define your life through the word of God. Because God's word is spirit. Jesus said the word I speak is spirit and life. And yet there are many of you who do not believe. Even as we speak, anytime a man proclaims God's word from the altar, there's always something that enters the people. Now, that's why you've got to be careful of what you hear. Because what you enters you will determine what exists in your life. If negative stuff enters your life, negative stuff will continue to exist in your life. Whenever you speak, people will hear negativity. Whenever you talk, people will see failure. There are a lot of people, when you don't need to study their life to know if they will be successful or not. Amen? You see people, when they speak, you just know that this one is not going to go anywhere because there are a lot of people out there, all their life, they have limited themselves by the reason of the things they say. Because their ways carries anointing. It carries the presence of God. Amen? And when they say, oh, it's not going to be better today. I don't think it's going to be okay. The world will travel it, bam, in the realm of, you know, like a speed of light. It will just project, bam. You know, the word will speak to, whatever you say speaks to the mountains and to the hills and, and to everything that is created. Amen? amen? To all creation. When you speak, the creation hears it and they say amen. amen. You say something that is negative, creation hears it and, and says amen to what you've said. Amen is let it be according to thy word. Amen. You know? So a lot of time we, we limit ourselves. Many people today, you know, most Christians have put a barrier on their life. Even if they go and make the greatest man of God on earth, you know, to pray for them, they will never get better. The reason is because they have placed themselves where they are. If you don't help yourself, nobody will help you. Hello? No man will help you. you it takes two to tango. Praise God. It takes two people to tango. So you've got to understand that God's anointing that is in your life can actually travel and change nations. Amen? It can actually travel and change situations around you. Amen. If you place a demand on the anointing and say, Lord, I want the anointing of God to move to my family and break that yoke, break that, you know, break that, you know, that ugly situation. Maybe everybody's sick, nobody's prospering. Almost everybody in your family is living a, a, what I call a, a life of lockstep mentality. Yeah, they are following after their former brother, after the, you know, the elderly brother that fell. The elderly brother, you know, grew up and fell and never become anything. Amen. 
you know, the second, the second son became, the same thing happened to him or her. The third son or daughter, nobody got married in there. And everybody know is just following inch step or lock step mentality. Nothing is working. And you, probably you are the only one, only star. And because you are the only, only light shining in that family, everybody's trying to pull light out of you. By the time they, take on, you know, they keep on pulling light and oil out of you, you will find out that you don't have any, any oil to give. Hello? There are times in life when you don't need to give your oil. All you need to pray for people to have their own oil. Because if you keep on giving your oil, you will discover that you will not have oil to give sooner or later. Hello? Time to place a demand on God to change the situations of your people, your brothers and sisters, your friends. When you pray for them and God break the yoke over their life, you will find out that you will not need to keep on giving and giving and giving. Hello? For many years, I cried for my genial ones to be repositioned. But I discovered it was just me alone. Everybody was calling me for money. Everybody wanted me to help them. And I mean, I know, I'm in the ministry. I don't have, you know, she's trying to build. And at the time, I discovered one day my wife told me and said, okay, when they call you, sometimes I'm not, I wasn't picking food anymore because I can help them. And my wife said, look, you are a minister. You don't, you don't shy away from them. She said, what you got to do if they pray, tell them you have no silver or gold, but in the name of Jesus, stand up and walk. So when she told me that, it's like a revelation hit me. Well, my Gino brother wanted to start business and was calling me and calling me. And one day he called me. I said, okay, I don't have money, but I'm going to pray for you now. Amen. I've never done that before. Am I taking somebody? Amen. And that day I prayed and prayed. I said, Father, raise him up in the same way you raised me up. And it's no long now. He's the one sending me money. Oh, I'm talking to somebody. <coughs> Am I talking to somebody? He is the one sending me what money? <laughs> like, like, you know, in my country, the other day he sent me $1,500. Now, I send him $1,500 from my country. You know what it is. Hello? But I need to give him what I have. Why well, am I still talking to somebody? Amen. You can give them what you have. Stop crying. You have something. You are a carrier of God's power. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you know what you carry? Hello, God's people. Amen. We limit ourselves. We limit the oil you know, in, in our life. We don't say it. We think that we are a dry people. Ah, God's people, you don't know who you are. If you know who you are, you, know, you, 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 you will not have any reason to worry. Because you know that when you get to that bridge, Holy Ghost will cross you over. Amen. Hello. You are a carrier of God's power. Say to somebody, you're a carrier. Amen. Start to shape your, oh, no, your society. We are called to reshape our environment, our society. Start redefining where you are. Hello, God's people. Right now, my Gino brothers, are doing very well. Even the last one is the most richest person right now in the family. Amen. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. And everybody in the land, about, about two years, three years ago, everybody was looking unto me. Everybody. But right now, overnight, I st- but this prayer, I started praying in the last few years. Say, Lord, raise them up. Raise them up. Raise them up to do what I couldn't do. Amen. Now I'm telling you, they are doing the things I'm not able, I've not been able to do. Amen. Hello. Because I enforce what God has given to me. Amen. Hello. Hallelujah. Enforce the oil. Enforce the presence of God in your life. Amen. Change the atmosphere. Speak into your marriage. Oh, nobody's talking to me. Amen. Speak into the life of your children. That way, if you speak, God backs it up. Amen. You speak, God backs it up. You speak, God backs it up. Amen. He's waiting for you to speak. That's what about Psalm, Psalm says, Psalm 18, 1 verse 10. They open wide your mouth and I will fill it. Amen. Open wide your mouth. So God is waiting for you to open. Open it up. God backs it up. How does God feel what comes out from your mouth? Because God is a positive God. If you speak positive, God backs it up. Hello. And you don't even know. It will not be long. People will just wonder, this guy had no money three years ago. But now everything has just changed. Hello. 
all of a sudden your dress change and Lord, you begin to talk big and they keep on wondering right now you're talking in dollars and not even in cent <laughs> am I talking to somebody all of a sudden situation begin to change people see we, with a new car and they are wondering what has happened to this guy I thought he used to beg before Hello? They saw you, your dress changed all of a sudden because people address you as you dress. Hello? I'm telling you, if you see some folk out there that have, have, that have got no money, they go to, you know, to, you know, to places, park and save or whatever, people give them more attention because they dress nicely. They look classy. But even if you have something in the inside and you go out there, they will think that you're a crazy person if you don't dress good. Yeah. So people address you the way you dress. I'm not talking to somebody. So, all of a sudden, it's the God dressed, you know, oh, I'm, I'm a bit de deviating, but allow me. Did you see that God dressed in, on Aaron? If the way God prescribed, you know, Moses, God asked Moses to dress Aaron in a certain manner to serve him as a priest. Hello? Hello? Am I talking to somebody? In other words, God's intention is for you to be way dressed. Hello? When will you eat your money? Oh, I don't know who I'm talking to. When will you eat your money? Some people have money that we never buy one cloth from year to year, the same cloth. From year to year. Hello? And when you see some other people who dress well, you say, oh, they're trying to, you know, be on top of the world. Be on top of the world. But somehow you appreciate them. Amen? Some people sometimes condemn what they appreciate in the secret. What you, you know, what you appreciate in the secret, don't condemn in the open. Because if you condemn it, you will never have it. Hello? Begin to appreciate people around you. People that are doing very well say, Lord, I'm going there. I'm going to get there. I know you're preparing me for something big. I know this is my portion. He's there for me to see where I'm going. Praise you, Lord. Ha, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, one pastor in London said, when their church was still 300, they were pray praying for every other big church in town. They were just praying for them. And all of a sudden, their church grew to about 8 to 10,000 and become the biggest in London. Amen? Amen. They were 300. When other churches were 3,000. But when their church grew, it became the biggest church. They were not intimidated by those churches around them. They just prayed for them. Because they, they knew that that is exactly what God was going to do in their own life. So when you see people that do not like progress. Amen? People who do not know how to celebrate people, they will never become like them. Hello? Learn to celebrate successful people because you don't know what it takes to be successful. Hello? Follow them. Copy them. Don't criticize them because you will, you will never get there. If you want to be successful, you know, read the life of successful people. Read books. Hello? How do they succeed it? Why do they succeed? What do they do? Don't just say, oh, some people criticize Joel Austin. Hello? Can you, have you been a, 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 a pastor of 30,000 church? Oh, I don't know who I'm talking to. Now. Is there anybody here that has pastored 30,000 church? Do you know what it takes to pastor 30,000 church? Then listen to Joel. Hello? Listen to him. Because the more you continue to criticize him, you will never become like him. Pastor three people and know what it takes, what it puts out of your soul and your family. Hello? Celebrate people. Celebrate people and see what you will become. Hallelujah. I want to quickly share something that is very important right now. Okay. Now, I want to share about two or three points now before we go. Amen. Please give me 30 minutes. Amen. Let me see how I drive it from next week. I'll continue. Now, anointing, you know, assignment, there's what I call assignment anointing. Now, assignment anointing is given to fulfill a specific purpose and it ceases to function soon the assignment ends. Now, can we quickly look at the book of Kings, 2 Kings 9, 1, 4, and 7. <clears throat> I want to quickly show something. Let me take time and if we can see the scriptures now. <laughs> Second Kings, hallelujah, 9, 1, then 4 and 7. Shall we quickly all read God's people? He says, Elisha the prophet called one of the children of the prophets and said unto him, Guide up thy loins and take this bunch of oil in thy hand and go to Ramah Gilead. Then go to 4, <laughs> hallelujah. 
said, so the young man, even the young man, the prophet, went to Ramoth, what? <coughs> Gilead. <coughs> Move on. Move on. It's, and thou shalt smite the hands of Ahab. No, 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 no. Move on to five. 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 To six. Then, and when he, he came, behold, shall we read together? The captains of the host were sitting. And he said, I have an errand to thee, O captain. And Jehu said, unto which of us? And he said, to thee, O captain Jehu. Now six. And he arose and went into the house. And he poured the oil on his head and said unto him, Thus say the Lord God of Israel, I have what anointed thee king over the people of the Lord, even over Israel. I have anointed you king. When God anoints you, he anoints you for something. Amen? In verse 7, look at what he, was, what he was anointed to do. And thou shalt smite. The anointing was what? To smite the house of Ahab, thy master, that I may avenge the blood of my servant, the prophets, and the blood of all the servants of the Lord <coughs> at hand of Jezebel. Watch this. God chose Je Jehu. He was a commander at this time. God, you know, chose him and anointed him. The assignment, he received what I call specific assignment. Amen? Specific assignment to destroy the house of Jehu. That was what the assignment, amen, was for. The assignment was to destroy the house of Jehu. Am I talking to somebody? Now, he was not asked to destroy any other person. He was only asked to destroy the house of Jehu. So sometimes God gives you specific assignment, specific assignment to change a particular situation. That assignment is not for anything else, just for what you've been called to do. For example, the book of, in the book of, uh, of Jeremiah chapter 1, reading from 10. When God called Jeremiah, amen, he said to him, Today I have appointed you, I have appointed you over kings and what? Nations. I have appointed you what? A, a prophet over nations and people. God can appoint you a prophet, appoint you a millionaire, appoint you a man of authority over this community. Am I taking somebody? Okay, God appointed him, say, he said to do what? To the throne, to overthrow, to kill, and to destroy, to build and plant. Jeremiah 1 verse 10. That was a specific assignment. Hello? And God gave him a specific anointing. And as long as Jeremiah continued with that ministry, he did not fail. If you watch the ministry of Jeremiah, it was ministry of confrontation. Oh, yeah, yeah. Look at what God said. See, I have this day set thee over. May God set you over. In the name of Jesus. I've set you over the nation and over the kingdom. God can set you over people. Amen. To root out. To pull down. To destroy and to throw down. Then to build and plant. Uh, you know, Jeremiah have about fourfold ministry to destroy. To confront. Before building and planting. That was his specific assignment. And God gave him the anointing to back up this assignment. And Jeremiah, you watch him, he did not fail in his work with God because he was, his ministry was revolving within the perimeter of this command. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. You find out it was all revolving within this command. Okay, we see now, we see also God gave Jehu a command, assignment anointing. He was to be a king. He was a king for 20, about 28 years. But you discover that soon after this event, when he destroyed the house of Ahab, we did not hear of Jehu anymore. Nobody's talking to me. <coughs> we did not hear about his impact. He was a king for 28 years. But soon after this assignment, he dethroned the house of Ahab, kicked them out of the kingdom, killed Jezebel, amen, and did all that God asked him to do. We did not hear of him. But he did one, you know, you know, he did, you know, a, he made a mistake. A mistake that actually, you know, tent the calling, tented the anointing. God asked him not to destroy any other person, but to destroy the house of Ahab. The anointing was given for that specific assignment. Hello, God's people. Yeah. But now, Jehu was so zealous. He was of a zealous for God. The Bible says in 2 Kings 10, written 11 and 14. 
If you look at 2 Kings 10, 11, then to 14, you find out he start killing the, all the members of house of Ahab, which was right. It's within the ambit of that appointment. Amen. Then he went beyond that. Start killing the friends of Ahab. And as many that are related, all the friends, amen, that are, we are related to the house of Ahab. Even though they did not belong to the house of Ahab, but he felt that it was within the ambit, amen, or designation of the anointing, of his anointing to kill them. And he started killing them. And I'm telling somebody, he killed them all. If you read, and maybe, okay, let's quickly read. Say, so Jehu slew all that remained of the house of Ahab in Jezreel, and all, and all his great men, and his king's folks, and his priests, uh, until he left him known remaining. <coughs> Move on. And he arose and departed, and came to Samaria, and as he was at the, sh at the sharing house in the way. Oh, Rabbi. Jehu met with the brethren of Ahaziah, king of, e of Judah, and said, Who are ye? And they answered, We are the brethren of Ahaziah. And we go down to salute the children of the king and the children of the queen. Okay? He said, And he said, Take them alive. And they took him alive and slew them at the pit of the sharing house. Even two and forty men, neither left he any of them. He killed them. He, he went beyond the assignment. Hello? And kill them, kill everybody that related to friends of Ahab. They move beyond that, kill the, the, those that were related to the king of Israel, Ahaziah. He even killed Ahaziah because Ahaziah was, was you know, having rapport with them, the son of Ahab, Joram. Hello? But he was not asked to kill them. Am I talking to somebody? Yeah. Then, after many years, in the book of Hosea, chapter 1, verse 4, God says, I will punish. The house of Jehu. Hello? Amen. Anybody listening? God said, I will punish the house of Jehu for, amen, for his wickedness, for the massacre he did in Jezreel. Remember, God anointed him to do for that appointment. But now God is saying, I'm going to deal with him because he did not follow my instruction. Hello, hello, God's people? You know, you see, the anointing God has given to you, if you can use it to do all what you want to do. But at the end of the day, if you don't follow this, you know, God's specification for that anointing, you will discover that that anointing will turn to hunt your life. It will turn to destroy, to fight you. There are a lot of ministers, a lot of people that have met, they have met shipwreck of their life. Because all of a sudden, have you seen people you know, you met them 10 years ago, they, mad, they were moving in such a mighty presence of God. You know they, there is something in their life. But after 10 years, you just didn't know what happened. Some of them, it's not because they committed immorality. It's just because it's me. They, 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 you know, they fell simple instruction. They misused the anointing. Am I telling somebody? You see, you can misuse the anointing of the Holy Spirit, but not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit releases the anointing in your life. You cannot misuse the Holy Spirit because it's God. But you can misuse his anointing. And a lot of people today have misused the assignment anointing, and immediately that assignment ends. You see people that are supposed to achieve great things, and everything was moving in such a way that you can't explain. They have unexplainable favor. They begin business, and the business is flourishing. They got, you know, got married. They just give birth to children, and they know the marriage is so beautiful, but all of a sudden, they are, you know, you, you send there is a switch in that marriage, and nothing is working out, and you keep on wondering. It could be the man or the woman have missed the instruction that was given to them from the onset, or inception of that marriage. Am I telling somebody? And if you miss out from that, that God has given you the anointing for, you, that is when you send struggle. Struggle all over. At that moment, nobody will help you. Nobody. Hello? Unless you go back to the drawing board and discover why did God give me money? There's some money that was given to you. He wasn't given to you to spend. It was given to you to build the hands of God. Am I talking to somebody? <clears throat> the money that somebody can, God gave to you, that money was given to you just to build the hands of God. It wasn't given for you. Immediately you spend that money for yourself. You will start having sickness all over. Am I talking to somebody? Your business breakdown. Life breakdown. Your children all turn sick. You keep on wondering what has happened. From nowhere, growth out of your body, in your body. 
growth of tumor, cancer, whatever. You keep on wondering, what happened to me? Because you spend the money that was given for the kingdom for yourself. Amen? Am I talking to somebody? So always understand why the anointing is given to you. Why are you anointing? Now you have, you know, assignment anointing. Then keep within the ambit and specification of that assignment. If you don't, you will struggle all your life. Am I still speaking? Hello, God's people. You see, there's also what I call, let me explain, unusual anointing. You see, unusual anointing is that anointing that comes on you. Maybe <clears throat> you are not a prophet. All of a sudden, you see yourself, you went to a certain place or has heard, and there is a burden in that house. God wants to break spirit of poverty. Or God wants to break a spirit of rebellion or frustration over a particular household. And all of a sudden, that anointing comes on your life. Immediately, you begin to see vision right in there. You, you, you have never prophesied before. But you start sensing prophetic anointing on your life. And you start prophesying. Hello? It's an unusual anointing. It came on Paul. Hello? If you remember, in the book of Saul... In the book of Saul and Saul of Samuel, you discover Samuel 10, 10 and 12. Saul prophesied, so the anointing came on his life. And Lord, he saw you know, a group of prophets and began to prophesy. And after then, we did not hear that Samuel prophesied again. I mean, Saul prophesied. Then we saw in 19 also, 1 Samuel 19, if you read 23 to 24. We also discovered that Sam Saul prophesied two times, you know, all through his life. He only prophesied about two times. Is anybody here gospel books? Yeah. Am I making sense? <clears throat> Hello? So he prophesied for about two good times. But remember the first time he prophesied, it was not that Saul was a prophet. He was not a prophet. It's just that anointing of, of a prophet came, you know, fell on his life. When the anointing came on him, he prophesied. And he did not prophesy again until chapter 19 of 1 Samuel, amen, 19, 23, and 24. So what about if Samuel had gone to establish prophetic, I mean, saw prophetic ministry? Nobody's talking to me. If he had gone to establish prophetic ministry, his ministry would have failed. For the fact that he prophesied two years ago, or you prophesy yesterday, does not mean that you have a prophetic anointing. It's just that you, a lot of people do not walk in the office of prophet, but anointing of a prophet can come on their life. You can sense you started operating for a season because God knew there is nobody in that vicinity to do that job. So what God will do, he will release that anointing on your life to take on that mountain. Oh. And soon the men that have that anointing come, Amen. You find out that you're not flowing in that realm again. Amen. It's not that you have sinned. You haven't sinned. But it wasn't your ministry. It was not your office. It's just that the, that the anointing came on you to fulfill that particular purpose. Because the person that have that ministry is not available at that point in time. Amen. And sometimes some people don't know. They wonder why is it before the salvation but now they don't. Maybe God gave you that ministry for that moment to, fail, you know, to battle some of the challenges you had at that time. As soon as that challenge is over, you find out that you don't, want, you don't send that ministry. No matter how much you cry and call God to release back that grace, it's not going to come. Because um, as a matter of fact, it was not your office. The anointing just came on you temporarily to fulfill a particular ministry. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody? So God told, showed me yesterday, you know, in book of Num, in number. Do you remember when um, 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 the um, donkey spoke to Balaam? And God said the reason donkey spoke is because there was nobody, amen, that had that anointing of vision that could see at that moment, amen. So God used donkey to speak to Balaam. If there was a man that had that, that grace of vision to see, Bang, a man to, to speak to because at that moment Balaam had already lost everything. He was risen. He was about risen. Amen. Even though he could see, but he couldn't see for himself at that moment. It does happen to us. Amen. But God speak through the mouth of the donkey, and God said to me, "Now don't ever ask God to speak to you through donkey. It will be abuse of the Holy Spirit in your life." Nobody's talking. So if, if now in this in, the, in in our dispensation, donkeys no longer talk. 
Because God has given you Holy Ghost. And God also has a lot of men around you that have Holy Ghost. In the days of, of Balaam, there was no, the Spirit of God was on them, but not in them. A lot. So, but now we have the Spirit in us. Almost everybody here have the Spirit of God. So if God want to speak to you, if you're unlistening, God will move somebody to speak to you. He's not going to send a donkey. Because it will be abuse of the Holy Ghost that you have received. Amen? So unusual anointing comes on you to confront some things. Maybe when you don't have your pastor to prophesy to you. Oh, hello? Amen. Your sister, your church sister is not there. Nobody cares to know what you're going through. All of a sudden, that anointing comes on you. And you see yourself breaking yokes and mountain. Maybe you're not somebody that, that is usually happy. But because you're, you, no, you don't normally smile, not that you're, you're bitter. But there are people, when you look at them, they're always gloomy. They don't smile, but they're happy people right in the inside. Because they relate to themselves. I might talk to somebody. <clears throat> but now, you find yourself, you're going through a tough time. And God released anointing of gladness. Oh, yeah, yeah. I might talk to somebody. The Bible says in the book of Hebrew, 9, 1 verse 9, that Jesus Christ received, uh, amen, was anointed with anointing of gladness. Amen. And now people, when they minister, people are all laughing and laughing. In most cases, when you see a person, you have you seen people, they are preaching or praying for people, and the whole people are smiling, everybody falling, and, uh, and they laugh. Amen? In the Holy Ghost. Those men have anointing of gladness. Oh, nobody's talking to me. Am I talking to somebody? So that anointing comes. Sometimes you're going through a you know, dark season in your life. And God released that oil of gladness. And even though you got some problem, financial problem, be on pet bees, may your marriage is shaking, and everything has totally fallen apart. And wherever you go, <laughs> any little thing people say, you love ha 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 ha. Am I talking to somebody? And they just wondering, I thought she got some problem. Why is it that she's smiling? The reason is because the anointing of gladness came on you. <coughs> Am I talking to somebody? And they just can't explain why you are happy. Hello? They did not know that God rubbed something on you. May God rob you with oil of gladness today. May God rob you with unusual oils. In the name of Jesus. May those big things that seem big before you become little. In the name of Jesus Christ. May those things that seem so difficult to handle become so small. In the name of Jesus Christ. May you laugh yourself out of trouble. Can I hear somebody smile? Oh, nobody smiling. Can I hear somebody smile? <coughs> somebody smile. Laugh yourself out of that difficult situation. Oh, <laughs> hallelujah. Laugh yourself out of it. And when people look at you. As I told this guy is going through strawberry still smiling. I see some of you smile in this season in the name of Jesus. Your family will smile in this season in the name of Jesus. May you have that unusual anointing. May you have that unusual fire. May that unusual power touch your life. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Oh, Yadipo's wife, there was a time, some of you have watched this video here, Bishop David Yadipo. She was sick and was paralyzed. That's why we've got to pray for ministers' family. Because the things that go after ministers, you don't know it. The enemy will attack the marriage, attack children, attack finances. So she went, you know, you, some, of, some of you have seen Bishop Yadipo, you've seen that crazy man, right? Yeah. You've seen that man so crazy. How dare that the enemy walk into his house and attack his wife while that man with such a great anointing? A man that has passed through 50,000 church in one sitting. How did the enemy penetrate that house? How? So the enemy can always do some magic, but it's not forever. Amen? Amen? And this lady, I heard her preaching. She said when she, 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 they went through that, she was paralyzed, literally paralyzed. And so she said, one day, and the Lord said, my daughter, get ready. <coughs> oh. This morning, I read the book of Jeremiah. Reading, I think, the last three, four verses in Jeremiah chapter 1. And God says, said to Jeremiah, the first thing God said to him there, he said, get ready because you will confront this nation. Amen. Anytime God is about to do something in your life, the first thing he will do is to make you ready. Because if you're not ready, you can perform, you can function. You've got to be ready mentally, you've got to be ready, ready psychologically, you've got to be ready emotionally. Amen? You've got to be ready. 
God said, get ready. And uh, said, Jeremiah, get ready for, for, to confront this nation. And do not be afraid of them. Because if you're afraid of them, I will make you fearful of them. A lot. And Jeremiah was ready even before he went to confront. Anyway, God said, get ready for my about to heal you. So that, she said, that fateful day, the anointing of joy and happiness rested on her. She said, she smile and smile and smile. Somebody smile. Oh. Oh. Smile. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She smiled and smiled and smiled and walked out from where she was lying somebody. Smile yourself out of that paralysis. Smile yourself out of that paralysis in the name of Jesus. That unusual grace come on her. It doesn't mean she went about and, and, and started smiling. All around, but that day, it was a day to smile. And she smiled. If I were you today, I would go home and smile. Say, God, I need an unusual anointing to break out from that confusion. You're making a decision. You don't know what to do. Maybe you're a man and your wife expects you to provide a leadership in the house. And you're under pressure because if you don't do it, she's going to think you're a woman. And you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> if you cannot provide a leadership when it is needed in the house. My wife will always say to me, I know that you will struggle, but at, the, at almost at the 11 hour, you will come up with a decision. And the other day, I was like, I was praying in, in, you know, in, my, in my small corner. And I said to the Lord, I'm in, a, in, a such, I'm in a value of a decision, and I need to provide leadership for this house right now. And my wife always believed in me that I, I'm going to come up with something. I said, Father, I said, because she believed, give me an idea. Oh, God. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody? <laughs> Because she believes, that is something I believe. <laughs> I said, Lord, give me an idea. Because she always believed that at, the, at, the, at the almost 11 hour, God will give me a word. And when it is implemented, it has always worked. So sometimes when I, even don't, when I don't even have an idea, she still believes. And I'm there still trying to be a man. But, but I don't tell her, look, I, I've lost it here now. But I just, you know, I want to be a man. Oh, glory be to God. Ooh. In the last one week, I was so confused on how to deal with a certain situation. So confused. But thank God for peace came this weekend. May peace come over your life. In the name of Jesus. May peace come over your family. In the name of Jesus. May you experience overwhelming peace. Unusual peace over your marriage. Over your finances. Over your children in the mighty name of Jesus. May there be a volcanic eruption over your life. Eruption of greatness, eruption of power, eruption of favor, eruption of joy. May it overtake you and impregnate your life. In the name of Jesus, I command that mountain to disappear. I command that heat to disappear. I command that heat to be leveled by the Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus. The Bible said, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Ha, yeah, yeah, yeah. In that Zechariah chapter 6, verse 6, 4, verse 6, God said, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit. Then 7, he says, this mountain shall be level. And God said to me, the mountain can only be level when the anointing of the spirit it is not the spirit that confronts the mountain. It is the anointing of the spirit that confronts the mountain. Oh. Anytime you see a way, don't ask the Holy Ghost to go and level mountain. Ask the Holy Ghost anointing to go and level your mountain. Amen. And God said, this mountain shall be removed. Is there anybody here today? You've been trying to break through. You've been trying to walk through that mountain and through that hill and that valley. And it looked like it's not working. Everything has become difficult. And you can just see the walls and, and see the mountain and see the intimidation and see the lack. And you, nobody knows what you're going through. In the spirit, you're just crawling. But if one day you will ask the Holy Ghost to give you, you know, that anointing of, 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 of faith, that unusual anointing, even if you don't have faith, ask God to give you spirit of faith. 
spirit of faith. When the spirit of faith comes on you, you know, you may not have faith, but God can give you unusual spirit of faith. Hello, you can look at that mountain. I've always been telling you, I learned this from one man of God. Do you know how to overtake your mountain? Nobody's talking to me. She's still God, are you talking to me, somebody? Do you know how to conquer your mountain? Can I show you once again? Can I show you once again? Close your eyes. I don't mean yours. I'm closing mine, but don't close yours so that you can see me. If you want to see me, you need to open your eyes wide. Am I talking to someone? Close your eyes. You are seeing that wall. You are seeing it, but you know what it do? You walk through that wall. You walk through that wall. You walk through that wall. You refuse to say it. Because you cannot pass through. You cannot break through if you're looking at that wall. I don't know how we've been able to feed even in this city. Every month it has always been war. But we keep on looking beyond that war. Look beyond that war. You know, do you know, I'm done now on Christmas. You know, they are what you call on New Year night. Somebody came to my house and gave me $60. And that was the only money we had. And so my wife said she wanted to buy something, buy food for baby. I said, okay, I'm going to give you 20 something dollars from that morning. So I came here, I wanted to give $20. Then we have to, on the New Year night. And then we reserved $40. So um, by the time I know the offering boss, they take it. I was like, oh, I didn't give my offering. I said, oh, that's a good one too. <laughs> Praise God. So, so I, I, but, but then, but then, can I say I made a mistake? Unfortunately, <laughs> on Sunday I came to, to church with my sixty dollar again, and our sister here shared on giving, and I was there, man. I have the sixty sixty dollar, and that was the only thing we have for the whole year. And I take, the, I took, I take that sixty dollar and I throw it in the offering box because I was touched by what she shared. And then it wasn't two days. Somebody come to my house and brought us sort of thing. Then I asked the person, do you mean you buy the whole supermarket? <laughs> oh, no, no. I might take it to somebody. <laughs> I said, oh, you went and buy the whole supermarket. I might take it to somebody. And I was wondering, if I hadn't given my $60, I probably would use that $60, buy a few things, and that would be gone. But the man of God said, give to the man of God, let him eat, and then there will be oil in your house. Oil comes when you sow. Oh, it's a sowing time. Say to somebody, say sowing time. Say to somebody, say sowing time. Sow your sorrow out of your life. Sow your pain out of your life. Sow your disappointment out from your life. In the name of Jesus, may this day be your day. May you never know a bitter day in your life. May this day mark the beginning of your greatness. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Shall we just stand up and give him glory? Just stand up and give him glory. Stand up and give him glory. Give him glory. Just give him glory.